Loctar here, coming at you with a massive selection of samples behind me. I don't know if you all can see those or if I can get the camera to, uh, to focus on them enough, but so we did this blind the other night. Uh, as you can see, I wasn't joking. The Larceny Barrel Proof Sample, Sample E, is almost gone. I, uh, I had that last night and I saved a little bit to put into my infinity bottle because it was that delicious. I fully intend to go after the Elijah Craig barrel proof in a uh, another night. But I've got so much stuff sitting out here in front of you all. Um, and I had these labels facing forward, I don't know how they got messed up. I haven't been drinking yet, so I should probably know. Probably happened when I moved my chair over here because it normally rests on the other side. But as you can see, there's a lot of samples before you. I feel like Vanna White right now. Ha -ha. Just not as pretty. Um, the, uh, the samples that you see before you, these eight came from RJ the Fed. He sent me a lot of good stuff. Unfortunately, one of the samples busted in the packaging. As you can see, whatever this one was, which we don't know exactly what it was, because the way that it leaked, the cap actually busted off, and I replaced the cap with another from a different sample, um, and it leaked all inside the packaging, and so it ended up smudging the labels on everything that was in that packaging. So we have uh, we figured out what a couple of these are because they weren't too bad, but two of these are complete blinds. I have no idea what they are because RJ couldn't remember what he sent me. I have no clue what's in those bottles, and that gets me kind of excited. So I think tonight, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna open one of those two, probably the one that still has some in it and we're going to try it. I'm gonna give you some tasting notes and we're gonna see what it comes out to. I will, uh, I'll talk with RJ the Fed after I give my tasting notes before I post this video and I'll try to post a picture of the bottle and what it is as I'm explaining what it is that I am getting from it. Now understand, I could be completely wrong. Again, I have been blessed to be accurate with the descriptions and the tasting notes and everything that I've done so far. I say blessed because that's how it is. I am new to this entirely. There's no reason I should be giving as accurate a tasting notes as I have been doing. Eventually the streak is going to end. I am certain of it. So this is going to be fun. I also need to shout out um, Whiskey Shaman for a couple of different things. Number one, he sent me samples also. He also sent me this coin. Now, I'm gonna have to get it to focus, but that is Whiskey Shaman's logo. And I don't know if you can tell, but that's a pretty thick coin. And on the back, it says, keep your spirits up. Pretty cool little coin, okay? Very cool coin. And uh, I took the pin that uh, RJ sent me, the Natterjack pin, and put it in with the label, the uh, plastic protective case and the label for that coin, so I don't lose those. Um, but anyways, he also sent me a blind. Now you all can't see it, but there are numbers on each of these bottles that he wrote in Sharpie. Uh, and then he also sent me instructions. So his blind is a little bit different. It's called Find the Imposter. Uh, one point for the type of whiskey, if it's a bourbon, a rye, or a malt. One point for the proof, plus or minus two uh, for the proof. One point for if it's a finished bourbon or whiskey or rye. Uh, two points for the bottle guess. And then five points for finding which one is the imposter. Total of 25 points. Here's the problem. I don't have a lot of whiskey knowledge. I have a lot of tasting knowledge. I know a lot about food in general, and I know how to taste these whiskeys. I'm learning about the different flavor profiles though, so I don't know how accurate I can get with this. It's gonna be a very low scoring event when I do it, 
However, that is not what we are doing tonight because I don't feel like I could do four pours tonight. <laughs> so, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna grab this bottle right here, and as you can see, boom. We have no idea what that is. No clue. And since I have no clue, it's gonna be really fun. So, join me on a journey as we discover, yeah, it's clean. What RJ sent me. Thank you again and cheers to RJ the Fed and to Whiskey Shaman and Night Method and Life from the Patio and Drizzle and I'm sorry if I missed anybody. Who else is sending me samples? <laughs> Good night. That's a lot. Uh yeah, I, this is this is a ton of samples that sit before you and it's not even all of it. I still have 14 samples in the mail on their way to me. I'm going to need a bigger table very soon. <laughs> very soon indeed. Okay. Anyways, let me get this into my Glen. It's a bit of a heavy pour, but I don't plan on having anything else tonight. So let's do the full two ounces. And I still have some of it left, so if I end up liking it, we will uh, add the rest of that to my infinity bottle. Y'all, I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away. Ooh, that's got some proof on it. Whatever it is, it smells good. I will say that. And yes, that's my favorite phrase. I say, I will say that so many times. It's a filler in my mind. So I apologize if that annoys you. I'm working on finding better word choices and ways of saying things. Um, I'm nerdy with everything. And so even the way that I speak makes a difference to me. Um, you all may not even pay attention to it. You may not even notice it, but there are some people like me with ADHD who uh, pay attention to everything. Okay. Interesting. So, this one smells good, so I know it's not the Bernheim wheat whiskey. Um, but the oil, sorry, I'm looking back here because it's reminding me of something else that I have smelled. I just can't really tell what it is. But the oil, anyways, I keep getting distracted, I'm sorry. Um, it's beating up like the Bernheim did. So the Bernheim wheat whiskey, it beaded as it was up top instead of it being a continuous line and then the legs were very far separated, which is exactly what this one is doing. And then the color on this one, it's a light caramel color, which means to me, this would be something younger because it's not very dark. Wow. It smells... It smells like... Like straw. Like fresh cut hay. Well, not fresh cut, dried. Dried straw. I get hmm. I get a little bit of cinnamon and that's if that's cinnamon because it's very light it could be nutmeg it doesn't smell bad though it's sweet on the nose, very sweet. The proof though, I'm gonna say it's at least 100 proof. It's got me interested, I will say that. Um, there I go again. <laughs> I have no idea what this is going to be, what this is going to taste like. 
I enjoy the smell. And I think I've aerated it enough. Let's see how this tastes. So, cheers, RJ. Thank you for the samples. Thank you for sending me this. Uh, I, I don't even know what else to say other than thank you. This whole community has been absolutely amazing. I am floored by the generosity that has been shown. And to you all, you know, it's just a couple of ounces out of some bottles you already have. To me, because I got into bourbon for health reasons. I got into bourbon because it helps me sleep. It helps with the nerve pain in my legs. It helps with circulation. Helps with uh, limiting sugar production in my liver while I sleep. And as a type 1 diabetic, that's important. This is you all helping to take care of me. Because these pores, when I empty my bottles, if I run out of money and I don't have anything, I mean, now I've got all of these different samples that this means extra time. This means extra of something that is going to help me and my health in the long run. It goes so much beyond, you know, me getting to put out content for you all and giving tasting notes and talking about what I smell in these whiskeys and bourbons. And it's... It's so much deeper than that. And the fact that people are just willing to say, hey, we liked your videos, we like what you're doing. Here, try this one. Blows me away. Absolutely blows me away. And for anybody who is local to San Antonio, by the way, April 13th, it's a Saturday, the Rosebush downtown. It is a uh, food truck park where they have Malik's Philly's Famous, there's a ramen place there, there's a seafood truck that's there. All of the food is amazing. If you haven't tried Malik's Philly's Famous, you haven't lived in San Antonio, okay? Because that is the most legit Philly cheesesteak place you will ever find. And it's owned by Malik Rose from the Spurs, who, by the way, was from originally from Philly. He knows what he's doing, and he does it perfectly my absolute favorite place to get a Philly cheesesteak. It'll take them forever because they do them all fresh to order. You will pay an arm and a leg, but at least not your firstborn. It's worth every penny with that place. This is not a paid advertisement, by the way. I just really, truly believe they have the best Philly cheesesteak in San Antonio. April 13th, we're going to be there at the Rosebush. From 6 to 8 p.m., we are doing a bottle share. Bring a bottle of something you enjoy and share it with some people. It's that simple. We've got about 15, 20 people so far that are supposed to be showing up. So very excited uh, to be doing that. And I'm gonna be bringing a couple of different bottles and sharing pours from them. And I hope that you all will do the same and join us if you're local to San Antonio. Even if you're not local, if you live around the area, like Whiskey Shaman, if you're out here in, uh, you know, you're in Fredericksburg, drive in if you want to. No problem with that. I would love to see you guys in person. Uh, share some pours, have some laughs, and share some really good food. Uh, I don't know if y'all can tell, I'm very passionate about food, I'm very passionate about bourbon. So, uh, anyways, let's get back to this. Yeah, so I'm guessing at least 100 proof. It kind of stings the nostrils as you nose it. I get this fresh straw, not fresh, I'm sorry, dried straw note as I breathe it in. It's offset by a little bit of vanilla and it's not quite caramel. It's a little darker than that. It's maybe a toffee note. And then that light cinnamon, nutmeggy. I, I don't know how else to describe this. I mean, it smells really good. So, here we go. First taste. Cheers. That one evolves on the tongue. 
Wow. I just went through. Oh my goodness. It's, it's three very distinct phases on this particular one. When it hits your tongue, the initial impression. Uh, I lost my notes in my brain because the way that it kept evolving. I'm like, oh, now it's this. Oh, now it's that. And I can't even remember the order. So hang on just a second. I'm sorry. Okay, so initial flavor that hits your tongue is sweet. It's like this, this caramel, no, toffee, because it's, it's kind of a darker, a deeper flavor. Not necessarily a darker flavor, but I would call it toffee. Um, and then mid-palate, so it... <laughs> Again, this changes three different times. The initial hit, you get that toffee. Um, let's see how the nose is changing. God. I don't know how people don't enjoy doing this. This fascinates me to no end. I am, I'm kind of blown away by, by the flavors and the way that these change and having that first taste, the way that the smell changes, because now that toffee is really coming through. That hay, that dried straw is kind of fading to the back. That initial impression, I mean, it's still there. You can tell that that hay smell is there. It's just, man, I get a lot of toffee, and then it kind of develops into a light leather mid-palate. And then that light leather moves away. You get a really oily mouthfeel as you swallow it. So on the tongue, there's no burn. As you swallow it, you get that Kentucky hug as it kind of goes down. It's that warming sensation from the inside out. And that leather, so you get the toffee up front. It's sweet. It's pleasant. It makes you want to let it sit on your tongue. That leather is light. It's not like the Jack Daniels tin kind of leather. It's not like licking a wallet. It's more of a pleasant, light note. And as it fades, because it transforms into the finish, you get this butterscotch note. And it is... It's really good. This is... This is a fantastic bourbon, whiskey, whatever it is. I don't really get any of the cinnamon. Is that baking spice? Hang on. It's on the finish. Light cinnamon nutmeg. Um, I think nutmeg is a more accurate description. It might be just the proof that's making me think that it's cinnamon. This could be over a hundred proof. The proof, so, it's so hard to judge proof because I have such a limited amount of higher proof bourbons that I have in my brain. I want to say it's like 110 to 115 proof, but it drinks like a bottled in bond, like that 100 proof that it's the same level of burn as like a 96 to 100 proof but the way that it hits my nostrils 
and the way that it kind of burns the whole way down to me feels more like 110 to 115. It's it's a strange thing to try and guess proof on any of these. I will say that. There I go again. But man, this is delicious. I gotta say, not having any brand bias by not knowing what's actually in the glass changes everything with what you're experiencing, what you're tasting, what you're getting from it even, the smells, the... Man, I have no idea what this is, but it is very good. So on the nose, I'm still getting that straw, that uh, dusty kind of feel, like walking into a barn that's got hay piled up, like, but then it's offset by having that, that caramel, that vanilla, that light touch of nutmeg on the end. There's something else sweet on the nose, but I can't really tell. I want to say butterscotch, but that's because I know I'm getting that in the flavor. There might be a slight fruity note to this. It's just the way that it's hitting my tongue. I it's hard for me to describe to you what it is that I'm experiencing as I'm doing this. But it's like it, it triggers in my mind these connections with different foods that I've tried and different things that I've smelled and different sensations that I've experienced while eating. And so my mind is just trying to make these connections and I'm trying to describe them to you as I go but I've got so many going on at the same time. It's like I have to quiet it down. I have to slow it down and really focus. Toffee, leather. That pleasant butterscotch with that nutmeg on the end. I I would absolutely own a bottle of this. I have no idea what this is, but this is delicious. And I hope my tasting notes are on point and that RJ uh, knows which one I'm talking about with the, uh, the flavors that I am getting. But again, I could be humbled and him would go, I don't have any butter or any bourbons that, that do that. So it could be. It could happen. Man. I will say. There I go again. I enjoy this one. This is delicious. I could definitely see myself buying a bottle of it. That pour will not last long. <laughs> Whatever it is. After the first sip, it's like, instead of punching you in the back of the throat, it's just that slow burn as it goes down. It doesn't hurt to drink it, which is a good thing. And it doesn't smell bad. Doesn't taste bad either. Whatever this is, RJ, thank you so much for sending it to me. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. That's what it is. So like a sweet oak. So that straw, a sweet oak, not fruity. It's that sweet oak that's hitting me. And so mid palate, instead of it just being the leather, there's also a sweet oak note to it. And that's what fades into the butterscotch. That's what that was. I was trying to figure it out. Hmm. <laughs> Not bad at all. Again, thank you, RJ, for sending this to me. Appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. 
hit that like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. Uh, I plan on talking with RJ about what I tasted in this before I post this video, so hopefully I'll be able to put up a picture of the bottle so you all can see what it is as I'm tasting it and going through it. I might even do what Bourbon Hall does and look up some professional tasting notes on it, post those to see how close I'm getting to what's actually in this. Um, whether it compliments me or whether it makes me look like a fool, I really don't care. It's a very good bourbon or whiskey. I enjoyed that. Um, and so, yeah, I think we're done for this particular video, but stay tuned. I've got plenty of samples to, uh, to run through and to give tasting notes on, to talk about the uh, amazing things that I have been sent. And then, of course, we're going to have another blind video with the four from Whiskey Shaman, and we will see what else we end up with. If you've got some ideas for a video for me, feel free to drop those in the comments as well. I respond to every comment that I get. Um, I appreciate you all taking your time and spending your day with me. Y'all have a great night.